Hey guys, so in the previous two videos, we looked at how to make a confirmation box and then how to take that script and put it into an external JS file that could then be called by the .html file. Now there are a couple of things that happened when I was writing that, that I want to quickly talk about. So one of them is these little apostrophe and quotation marks or coding marks. They're not really proper quotation or or apostrophe marks as I discussed in a previous video a while back, but that's what we call them just for ease. So I haven't used these apostrophes before. I've only used quotation marks, and quotation marks are probably the standard, but either one can work. The reason I switched, even though I'm normally using quotation marks, is because I put HTML in here, and that HTML contains their own quotation marks. So what happens here, if I switch these back the way they were, is it's going to do document write, and it's going to actually write this in here, and then it thinks that the string is finished because I have closed that quotation mark, and now it's going to think that this is a command. So, so if I run this, nothing happens, right? And if I view the console, you can see here that there's an issue. It's confused about line 4. Now let's actually zoom in a bit so you can actually see what I'm talking about. So, unexpected identifier, confirm hyphen box.js, line 4, here on line 4, here it is, here's the issue. And so it thinks this is the string, and it thinks that this is something else. It doesn't know what that is. It's confused. And that's because that's because this string was closed by that. So we need to make sure that we're not using the exact same coding mark here and here. So that way it knows that this is not closing that. That is actually a new one. It's going to go until there. And then this finally will close that. And so now if we save it and I refresh, we actually get what we're expecting. Uh, and the image broke because I don't have the image on this machine right now. So now we see a different error, but that one isn't the issue. The error now is that it can't find this image because I don't have that image in my folder because I just redid my computer. But you get the point. Now the other thing that I want to mention was down here, in brackets, we have this JS lint problems. So JS lint is a tool used often in JavaScript IDEs. You can even find it online where you can paste code in there and find out directly through there what it thinks. And we have quite a few here. These are recommendations. These are recommendations, things to consider to make the code more in line with what would be generally recommended. And you don't necessarily have to. Obviously the code works, but these are recommendations. So, first one confirm was used before it was defined. Okay, it still ran though, so I'm okay with that. I don't want to really mess with that. But there's a few others in here that I could easily change without much work. So expected if at column 1, not column 5. Now this works too, like it worked. It expects it here, right there. It expects it at the very front but it still worked. So if I save this now, that's gone. And it was the same thing there too. It was, it was on the bottom as well. Uh, white space in JavaScript doesn't really matter. However, that doesn't mean that the way that you're using it is necessarily what's recommended. And so they recommend that this be over here. They recommend that we don't have them way out there. And they're also recommending that these be further in too because there's no reason for them to be way out there, not really. That's just how I decided to do it. And we have that same issue now with the content inside of it. It's expecting these at column 5, not column 9. So that's that tab, that space. And now those go away. Now if I put it here, it'll still work, it'll still run, but it expects it at column 5, 
not column one, because that's considered good practice. Actually, it says it expects that there, and it expects this there. So you can go through here, and you can try to find what it recommends to help kind of clean up your code. And these are only recommendations. You don't necessarily have to do them, but this is what it's recommending. So you should read it and consider it. Here we use the double equal sign for like this is that, x is true, not x becomes true or x becomes confirmed like up here, but that it is in the state of being true versus false. False would be the other option, so it's a, it's a Boolean comparison. But what it's recommending is it's recommending that we do three equal signs, which is strictly true. This doesn't really matter that much in Boolean comparisons because it's either strictly true or it's strictly false, even if it's only equals true or equals false, because that's what it is. There's not there's not something else. And that's a little confusing right now, but we'll get into it later when we talk about variables or when we talk about strings a little bit more and different ways we can use them. But for right now, just be aware that there are two types of equals. There's regular equals and there's strictly equals. And sometimes you will want to use one or the other. It's recommending three because if you do two, there's an extra process involved that JavaScript does that could slow down and could make the code less optimized. But we saw it still ran. So, but that's what it recommends. So if we remove that, expected one space, expected one space, there we go. Expected at column one. So there we go. So we're able to clean that up. It's not perfect, but it's better. And so whenever you see this pop up, you should consider that. If you're writing your script inside of an HTML file, like when we first started, we didn't see this. Because it wasn't a JavaScript file specifically, it wasn't running JS lint. It wasn't looking for what could be cleaned up in that form because it wasn't looking at a JavaScript file. It was, it was looking at an HTML file. It just so happened to have script inside of it. So that is an advantage here. If you want to check your code, your script that is embedded inside of an HTML file, you can just actually type in JS lint to Google. Let's get rid of this. And here you can see JS lint where you can paste stuff in and you should get very similar if not identical results. So there you go. So I hope that helps explain a few things about JavaScript and brackets if you enjoyed the video, if you found it useful, pressing the like button is always appreciated. And if you'd be interested in being notified when I upload new videos, you can always hit the little subscription button as well, which will help you out with that. Thanks, and bye.